we're going to complete a past exam question on magnetic flux and induced EMF. Pause the video now and try all parts of this question. So magnetic flux is given this symbol and is related to this formula, which you can find on your formula sheet. What does it actually mean? Because you wouldn't just get marks for this. Magnetic flux is the product of the magnetic flux density and the area normal to the field. I've underlined normal because that is crucial. We only care about the perpendicular component between the field and the uh, wire. Magnetic flux density is defined from this formula, uh, F divided by IL, so F is BIL. So you would say magnetic flux density is the force per unit of current per unit of length, although it's obviously not asking that in this question. Two key definitions that you must know. Part B, it says calculate the current in a solenoid and they've given us lots, lots of information. They've given us EMF, total length, radius, and resistivity. Whenever I see resistivity, it basically always means uh, use the resistivity formula in some way. So this was my starting point. And I was thinking, well, I've been given a radius so I can replace area with pi r squared. Now I've also been asked for the current and I've been told what the EMF is. So I'm thinking, what is the relationship between EMF, current, and something else, which is gonna be resistance. And obviously we know uh, that V equals I R or R equals V over I. So I can substitute that in. So resistivity is V over I pi R squared over length. And then finally rearrange and say that current is V over resistivity pi R squared over length. Now it's a case of plugging in all the numbers from the question. And when you do that, you get 7.2 amps, which does seem like quite a high current. So it's always worth checking in again. That is the answer. So question I, I, quite a lot of text here. So it does take a little while to uh, uh, you know, figure out exactly what they want. Uh, they want the time taken for the magnetic flux to collapse to zero. Um, so we really need to know um, what the magnetic flux is, and then we need to know uh, how it's going to change. So the initial magnetic flux is obviously given by this. There's a, there's a hint from this question that's probably going to use this formula. And uh, we've been given the uh, magnetic flux density, it's a 0 0.90, and we've been given the area of the coil. So that gives us a magnetic flux of 1.17 times 10 to the minus 4 tesla meter squared. And then we need to know uh, how long it takes to collapse to zero. And, and they've given us the average EMF. So this should bring to mind the really fundamental relationship between induced EMF is uh, change in phi over change in T, or technically zero, uh, because you know, it's induced in the opposite direction which is what Lenz's law tells us, although that isn't actually needed here. So uh, we can then use this to find time. So if we rearrange time is the change in uh, magnetic flux over the EMF. And magnetic flux is given by obviously BA, but importantly, we've been given a lot of turns, so we have to account for each of those turns because each of those turns will multiply uh, the magnetic flux as, as the field goes through every single turn. So now it's a case of plugging in the numbers. We've got the EMF, we've got the turns, and we've obviously got BA from this bit here. So when you plug in all the numbers, you get the time of 8.6 times 10 to the minus 4 seconds.